Okay, uh, LVO happened. You probably know this if you're clicking on this video. LVO 2022 retrospective. Restaurant tier list. Advice for attendees. Now that it's too late because it's over and the Rio is getting destroyed next year, I think. So here's a few of the things that I learned at LVO this year. The first and most important one is probably uh, you shouldn't lose. This is something I was unfamiliar with. My first two games, I used an hour of my clock time to go to the high limit slots from and play the Willy Wonka slot machine. I lost $15,000, but managed to make it back through the Sex and the City slot machine. And then I came back, was able to fight Crusher Stampede for two whole turns for being informed that it was lunchtime and that uh, my opponent had gone home to kill himself. Uh, uh, another, if you are losing, you could... It, there's, there's poison. You could poison your opponent's beer. I don't know what kind of poison. I don't know much about poison. It's not something I thought of before for con but next time if you play me you might get a little poison sleeping less than two hours per night is good in that it ensures that you're in the proper headspace to not care about anything else but 40k have even more of a one-dimensional one-track mind than you normally do and lastly 3 a.m to 5 40 a.m is the best time to paint your army uh we arrived in vegas at a very prompt 2 a.m began painting by 2 30 or 3 and then yeah finished just in time to get uh, I think our, our team had a net average of like 0.9 hours of sleep, which is not good. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Here's a good idea. If you work, just don't just don't show up to work and paint your admec army then instead instead of the hotel room if you do go to the hotel room to paint bring an air compressor if you slip the hotel cleaning staff an extra 20 they won't tell anyone that they found a thousand suns blue uh smeared all over the lamp don't worry about that just bring enough money it'll solve all your problems if you don't have enough money you can put all of the money you do have on black and hope for the best it's very hard to lose in gambling the house always loses is the saying i'm sure they aren't making a profit off you here's the a thing i wanted to make instead of an army tier list it's way more useful and uh, will stay relevant for much longer okay, is the lvo 2022 food tier list this will probably apply to next year unless the rio is destroyed but then even then then like most of these are still applicable and found elsewhere uh s tier we're gonna start off with all you can eat sushi best meal of the trip for sure huge recommend make sure to try and call like an hour in advance if you go off strip they're a little cheaper and the quality is comparable if not higher oftentimes vegas has a shit ton of all you can eat sushi i don't even like we live in los angeles and there's not that many like more than any major city i've ever seen it's insane it's like 25 dollars. You, you can eat all of the sushi you can eat I mean, that's what the name implies it's self-evident they have a lot of uh like bottomless drink options too below that i would put eataly kind of over cost it's it's nice though it's just like good italian food or good for american vegas standard italian food good good for people who don't know anything about italian food which is me i like it i like eataly i know it's kind of just like a yuppie trash style restaurant but i enjoyed my time there i would recommend their charcuterie board it was like 40 bucks and we the whole team split it great time impossible meats i still eat meat sometimes but cows are cool so the impossible burgers they're pretty good the possible breakfast sandwiches that help me feel a lot better on day three and then below that going into the b tier uh eddie world in famous yermo california the saddest town in california to my understanding there's a giant ice cream sundae on the side of the road what's not to love wendy's you can imagine what that's like there's a surprising number of our teammates who had never had wendy's before baked potato is quite interesting there frosties are fine starbucks hotel starbucks uh really came in clutch the, the wait times tend to vary one starbucks was closed in the rio this year to my understanding they typically have two i'd also recommend bringing some like of those like pre-made starbucks drinks so you can wake up at exactly like 9 25 and run down for round one salting crackers now that i think about it i don't even i don't think i ate any saltine crackers this trip so they're disqualified smash burger pretty good convenient best friend restaurant this would be like a solid b or maybe even a tier but it was so fucking loud that i basically fell asleep it just killed all the adrenaline that i needed to stay alive from having not slept painting admec prior to the con i fell asleep at a abandoned blackjack booth convention food line it's too expensive and sucks but it is faster than a lot of the other immediate dining options the guy theory restaurant i was very excited about but they were closed it ultimately ended up be, we would wander around looking for
for better food and be like everywhere has a longer wait time let's just go to the con food line next time i would just i'll go straight for a convention food line unless you have the full lunch break or more if your round finishes early but if you're running close to time then um, you spend like 15 minutes packing after the round, just con food line is the way to go. Uh, American Bar and Grill is bad. I had the cob salad. I had maybe six bites. It took like an hour to get here. I'm going to put the, the lowest and the C tier. I forget what else I ate, so I'm not going to put anything in F. To talk about 40k for a little bit, some things I learned from this con is that, hey, no one knows how to play this game. It's very easy to be like a theory craft armchair 40k player and then have all these big brain predictions about Thick City and Crusher Stampede and get there and yeah sure those perform relatively well but in the end they're like not actually that scary or insane i had one matchup against crusher stampede and won the second one i lost the second one i lost i think mostly due to my uh, brain not existing at the end of day two rather than any inherent like great strengths of the list itself i mean it's a very good army but i feel like it was sort of blown out of proportion to me i think maybe i just have an army that can handle relatively well the orc speed mob but what's like remarkable remarkable about Warhammer is like how many opinions there are about what's good and how consistently they're wrong. Like this just always happens. People build these tier lists and speculate on stuff. And like the game is just insanely deep. And I feel like people like to break things down in isolation and like look at individual units and think like, oh yeah, like this data sheet is bad compared to like X, but then like, it's not a game about that. It's a game about, like, weird, intricate synergies. Trying to find uh, the, the things that work out between those armies is really challenging and often takes years. People tend to gravitate towards, like, what's established first and then ignore everything else in the book. And I don't blame them because it's, like, a very expensive thing to get into. And you're kind of taking a big risk by buying an army, right? And it's very time-consuming and you want to just know what's good before you get in. And Tabletop Simulator isn't super fun to test stuff on all the time. It's, like, hard to get an accurate gauge. And, like, it just takes, like, so much time to figure out what's good. And, like, it, people had kind of written Admic off prior to this event. And then uh, all it takes is one sermon robot man genius to uh prove them all wrong and i'm glad he did it's it's a hard game to solve i mean there's games like magic right where it's still like very hard to solve but like magic is just you know what everything does and the limitations of like the cards i feel like are more finite than warhammer in some ways in that there's no like spatial relationships and there's no variance in terrain or mission so i think warhammer just has like so many variables it's really hard to know what's absolutely good oh yeah everyone is wrong about custodes they're insane uh uh, fuck you if you thought otherwise yeah it's it's a gross codex and i'm uh i'm excited to jump ship and play them there will be orc sodas though i have uh i did this last edition too i'll put pictures somewhere a shout out to the hero running 40 plus cataphron breachers uh i was walking past your table and i saw your deployment and uh i almost cried it was beautiful they're bright pink it was an insane color scheme for an insane list well done i hope you won all your games a thing you can do uh if you sign up for three days of the convention or even two and you want to drop is you can skip doubles to get tattoos if you do so try to put more than 15 minutes of thought into the design 15 minutes minutes is about the amount of thought I put into this stupid Speed Freaks logo. Looking at it now, I wish it was like over here. And uh, yeah, if you if you end up not liking it, then you can just uh, cover it up with a bigger, even worse tattoo the next year, as I will. I will get a bigger, even more obnoxious work glyph that goes over this whole section of my arm now. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll keep them. He's kind of cute. I don't know how I feel yet. Uh, if you get any Inquisition or Imperium shit, it might make you look like a member of an obscure Greek or maybe Turkish fascist party uh just a heads up if you you know go into a lot of airports or do national travel you gotta yeah just uh yeah feral to the scouring it was our last time playing you uh fuck you we hate to love the game we love to hate the game i kind of missed the scouring already now but it's gone the scouring was one of my two losses this weekend i played against crusher stampede and flew into a hive tyrant in an attempt to kill him and did not my opponent was actually like ready to concede we were like about to talk it out and we did like one more turn and he managed to win but that's what playing the game and making mistakes is all about i had a few close games this weekend both my losses were like relatively close the scouring one was not in points at the end but yeah we did a lot of damage to each other's armies and again yeah he was close to conceding at some point uh but then i made a big dumb dumb play and ruined that like i feel like i learned a lot about the scouring and the crusher stampede matchup that game and that information is now just useless forever seven years from now historians will discover that eighth edition tower the strongest codex of ninth again 
again, we are all incredibly bad. Everyone thinks they know a lot about Warhammer and our hot shit. Every book in Ninth is like so deep and there's so many weird things out there that people don't try. Like Thick City existed and then it, it took until the thing that was established as like the best good thing was removed for Thick City to take its place. And I would argue that Thick City maybe has always been better in a lot of ways than for like which Incubi build people were doing before. Um, but again, yeah, change in research are hard and scary. If one person does well with list, I don't blame others for jumping on. And then if someone invents list themselves that does well and they like it a lot, I don't blame them for not wanting to switch either, right? Like you just bought all these models and shit. Like, yeah, why are you gonna be like, oh, if this like list is very good. I don't wanna play it anymore. Like, yeah, of course you're gonna keep playing it. But the main reason I bring this up is that you should always uh, experiment within your books if you can afford to and are down to do so. It's a lot healthier for the game as a whole and will probably be more fun for you. One of our teammates ran, uh, if you watch Richard Siegler's 40K Genius Man's Necron tier list video, I think most of their army is like, uh, in the F tier from that video, and they went 3 3, and a lot of ways just trying to prove a point. I think they could have easily gone 4 2. Units that look bad on paper become very good when you combine different traits with them. Doomsday arcs that are obsec and can also fall back from combat and shoot at a minus one are like a lot better than Doomsday arcs about either of those. If your whole army has quantum shielding, suddenly you can go from having just like a joke of a unit into something that's incredibly tough for a lot of armies to deal with. Like, I don't know if you've tried to fight against 12 plus quantum shielded Necron vehicles, but it's not that easy always. It like really shuts down certain matchups. I guess if you take away anything from this video, uh, it's that Admech, an army that most people kind of wrote off, managed to win because they were piloted by someone who's insanely good. I think at least one Tau player went like 5-1 or 4-2. It's another army, again, people consider to be a joke. And I really do believe that you can maybe not win LVO if anything, but you can do like relatively well with any at least like codex currently in the game if you're good enough and understand what it takes to win enough and also more importantly like what the meta is and what's good in 40k is purely determined by what other people are running so like yeah like manny's list with the 160 racks like that's only good because no one's running anti-rack weapons everyone's planning d3 plus three and like anti-thick city crusher stampede stuff and if you do something like that yeah you might just catch everyone off guard. I feel like you're kind of at a disadvantage if you're running one of the like big medalists and that like everyone will probably be building to counter you if you are the boogeyman. That happened with freebooters to me. Like I was just crushing with that army for a while and then suddenly uh, a lot more bricks of like 30 Deathwing Terminators with minus one to hit and a uh, minus one damage aura were popping up. Uh, so just remember, run whatever you want, get a dumb tattoo. I'm trying to remember why you wanted to play the game to begin with and always go for all you can eat sushi. I have more LVO videos coming up, but I wanted to make a little retrospective today, and I hope you liked it. Thanks for coming. Was I recording? Oh, I was recording, thank God. Ah!